Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Discover 2016 Las Vegas. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Hey, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Las Vegas for HPE, HP Enterprise, Discover 2016. This is Silicon Angle Media's flagship program, The Cube, where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Neeraj Kohel, VP of Global Marketing and Product Management for HPE Storage, and Trevor Jackson, Director of IT Infrastructure at SoCan Society of Composers, Authors, Music Publishers. So I can't wait to talk about Spotify, <laughs> iTunes, <laughs> and all the, all, the, all the digital transformations. Welcome to The Cube. Thank you, thanks for having me. Niraj, great to see you. So storage, just start with the storage. You guys have a great story we're going to talk about here today. Number one, you guys Number have one. announced Absolutely. some good, good, good numbers on the board, but really the fruit is coming off the tree on the composable mm -hmm. because it really highlights not only a good marketing way to understand, right. but it really is where the market's going on, the consumption, and ultimately as people build out that next generation, Correct. It's, they want to compose. It's very DevOps, it's very app focused, yep. has a good vibe to it. Mm -hmm. so share with us that, that vision and how that relates to, to what Trevor's here to talk about. Sure, yeah, so the composable vision has been really born, born out of uh, what our customers really need, right? I mean, if you look at storage industry evolution, it has really evolved from being sort of a NAS or SAN and how many of each do you want to a new modern, the modern framework which is really around uh, what we like to simplify into a service level optimized, which is a system defined models and perhaps a capacity or cost optimized end of the spectrum, which is how we look, think about our software defined spectrum. And there are needs on both sides. So we kept on simplifying the portfolio for our customers and got to distill it down to these two points. In that, now let's talk about the software defined, which is where a lot of the composability comes in. Uh, I think the need is, there are workloads and scenarios like remote offices where you need something really simple. Turns on very quickly, gets up, you don't need an IT staff, you don't need networking uh, gurus there trying to you know, set it together. Uh, but what we saw happening in the industry is a lot of that movement was creating yet another island. And that should not be the case because that has long-term costs and repercussions to our customers. Because if you just put a hyper-converged box and it's just not connected to anything else, you're sort of creating a problem for tomorrow. So let's talk about uh, Trevor. You know, obviously the music business, digital mm -hmm. transformation is all about you know, a new kind of consumption, right? Well, At the absolutely, consumer yeah. level. So you know, the rights and the business models in media has changed, certainly whether you're talking about movies or music. Mm -hmm. The freemium business model has become very you know, prevalent, mm -hmm. yet the consumption side leads to actually more conversion. And some people have seen success with that. It's obviously the piracy thing. DRM has been a big hot button. That must be a huge challenge, because now you have a composability issue on the consumption side to your customers. Mm -hmm. How do you guys look at that from a storage perspective? Because that's where the digital assets are stored. So how do you, can you just give us a landscape view of uh, your, your challenges mm -hmm. and how the HP storage fit into that? So we've been around for a very long time, uh, since 1925, and uh, traditionally a big part of our business has been regular television and, and uh, radio stations. And over the last 10 or 15 years or so, we've seen the explosion of digital streaming, as you mentioned, um, services like Spotify and Netflix and whatnot. So one of the challenges that we have is being able to aggregate all the data and information that we're receiving from the performances and ensuring that the creators of the music are, are properly compensated for their work. Yeah, and that gets complicated now with yeah. Facebook Live. <laughs> I got, yeah. I'm, at a, I'm at a game or I'm, I'm in a theater. I'm going to be you know, streaming from my phone now. So oh, yeah. How do you get your arms around this? Take us through. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's intoxicating just to think about it. I mean, it's a big data problem, and we're, you know, we're using our traditional methods of, of tackling it. We're also looking at you know, some of the big buzzwords like machine learning and um, you know, blockchain and whatnot, but you know, it's, it's a continual learning, learning experience for us, and we're doing what we can to ensure that we keep track of what's being played so we ensure that the proper rights holders are compensated. What has it meant for your business, this whole, I mean, is that must have been exploding. I mean, you know, in the 70s, you'd make, Tapes, you know, yeah, and everybody yeah. would do. Everybody was doing that, right? Mm. And now you don't. You, do, you, mm. you, you, you purchase them, or some people don't. They try to get around it. But mm. what has it meant for your business? This whole digital. Well, trend? I mean, we're seeing a shift, and it's not quite there yet. But you know, you heard of the term cord cutters. Um, you know, a lot of people are dropping traditional television and are going with Netflix and, and uh, Amazon um, uh, Prime, for example. Right. Uh, the same thing's happening to the music industry um, directly. People are not buying as many CDs as they used to. Um, they are going to iTunes and they're purchasing CDs, but are purchasing tracks. 
The other alternative that they're now making a shift towards is not even buying the tracks anymore. They're actually just streaming them, so they don't even own them. They just want to listen to it. They want to, to listen to the information. So um, for us, it, again, it's been a, a, a huge increase in the volume of data that we've had to uh, analyze. The business model's changed. I mean, look at one of the things I was talking with a friend who works at uh, Apple, and, and um, you know, they already announced it, but Taylor Swift was instrumental in there, and she kind of held out. Mm -hmm. But the old business model was, you produce some music, you go on tour, and then, but now the pressure to do another cut, or I don't have albums anymore, but set of, sets of music is so hard between the cycles that you see people doing things differently, the artists. Mm -hmm. They'll cut a deal with Apple or they'll put some free music out there. What have you learned? What, what's the big aha that you guys have come to in talking to the artists? Because at the end of the day, the art is the key, right? The, yeah, what's what's I, the, new, the new model? I think the new model for us, I mean, if you go on YouTube anytime, you know, within you know, five or six clicks, you're, you'll find a potential up and coming new artist. I think that's really changed the way that um, new talent is discovered. And we're looking at ways how we can use that data to find the next big, uh, big thing. So what has this all meant for your storage infrastructure? You had tons more data, a lot more diversification. How, what, what's, give, paint us a picture, what's your infrastructure look like? How is it evolving? So when I joined the organization about six years ago, we had a flat SAN, it was a, a traditional SAN, and then uh, we had some issues or some challenges with the volume of data at the time. So we went with a tiered solution, and uh, about two and a half years into that acquisition, we actually outgrew it. Um, two and a half years before we actually wanted to replace it. So that so was a performance issue? It was a performance or? issue, yeah. Okay, so yeah. tiering was a stop gap that didn't, the gap wasn't big enough for you. Exactly, <laughs> so I mean, things changed so Tsunami rapidly for us. So we quickly, fast. <laughs> yeah, we quickly outgrew it, so we started looking at other solutions, and again, they were tiered as well, but um, uh, when I went to Discover a couple of years ago and I saw the presentation on how uh, HPE and 3 Par are making the move to making Flash the same price as spinning disk, I was very much intrigued. Caught your yeah. attention. Caught my attention. Okay, oh, yeah, so, sure. so, okay so what happened? So, you, you were, so I met with uh, some of the, uh, the product engineers and had a discussion, how are you guys, what's the voodoo, what's the magic behind all of this, right? <laughs> and had what a really are you good... telling me? <laughs> yeah, so it's too good to be true. <laughs> yeah, so we had a really great discussion and I came away from it uh, very much impressed with what I saw. When I went back to Toronto, where I'm originally from, I brought my team down to the HPE uh, headquarters there, and we had a deeper dive, and we all walked away with the conclusion that this was the, the direction we should be taking. Okay. And now, how big now? I mean, how does it grow now, size-wise? Size-wise, I mean, I think we're very well positioned. Um, one of the things I really liked about the product itself is, um, you know, whether we go with the 7450, which is what we have, or 7200, or the you know 8400, or whatever, it's down the line. It's one unified OS. So for my team to be able to manage from the platform we're on today, if we need to increase the capacity, you got headroom. Go, Basically, you got a ton of headroom. Oh, we got tons of headroom, and you know the learning curve is pretty much non-existent going from one product line to the next. What was the business pressure? I mean, we were just watching Star Trek the trailer, which is a big announcement with HP. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like the old Scotty need more power. <laughs> you know, fire everything. I mean, the pressure in IT mm -hmm. is pretty heavy right now, so you gotta, you know, you're, you're the one getting the phone call, I need faster, I mean, is that, was that the environment like? Are you guys holding on? I mean, what was it like back in, in you guys before you moved over? Yeah, I mean, that, that was the, the pressure. We do what we call a distribution once a quarter, and um, we have a deadline we have to meet for the, the people to get their, their um, the royalties, the performers to get the royalties. And because of the volume information, we found that the cushion that we had <laughs> to processing the data and then paying out on that, it started getting smaller and smaller, and it's only going to get worse as time went on. Those royalty checks are pretty important to these artists, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. Phone absolutely. will ring off the hook if they don't get them. It's absolutely. So, Niraj, I wonder if we get your take on this, the, what's going on in storage. You're new to storage. I am. Right? You've got a software background. So what do you think of this sort of insulated world of storage? What are your perspectives as somebody who's not been entrenched in this business, the yeah. rare non-storage storage person? That's uh, right, yeah, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> like, like I said, I joined somebody's family, a large storage family recently, right? So It's interesting, quick aside, the guys who invented 3PAR were all non-storage guys, so there you go. I mean, that's right. Yeah, 3PAR, in fact, benefits a lot <laughs> from the fact defined. that they were actually uh, more of an OS guys, right? Yeah, and they right. all came, grew up in the OS world and then we moved to storage. So still infrastructure, whereas still you infrastructure, really were... Still infrastructure, yeah. Yeah, I was more from the software application space. But you know, that's why it's so relevant, because what is happening in storage fundamentally is two transitions from where I said, right? One is software defined, so really trying to see what capabilities can go into the software layer. But the other is application centric. So storage should start look, looking more like an engine of a car where it is important, it's critical, and it has to be right. But very few drivers actually th think much about the engine when they're, while they're driving. 
So it has to be something which is exposed in the application model and application framework and in the application's lingo. And we're seeing that all around us, whether it is from VM centricity or whether it is from the application centricity. So I think those are the two dimensions where storage is sort of coming closer to where I was in some ways, right? So that's exciting. The other part, of course, is the amount of innovation that's happening in trying to make storage really as a service. Into your composable question earlier, it's about how does the storage participate as a first-class service into a composable set of pools of services. And that's really, I think, what, what is interesting as well. The traditional storage absolutely is critical and very important still, I mean, in terms of the system-defined environments, hardware accelerated, and we excel with 3PAR, as you've already heard. Uh, but I think it's also trying to get further up the stack, which is interesting for me. What does that mean for storage to be more application-centric? Is it knowledge of the application or data that can feed the application? Workload specificity, elaborate on that. Please. Yeah, it could mean a lot of things, and I think the, there's an evolution path to further and further on that dimension, right? But today what it really means is being aware of the application, being able to be controlled from the application. So you think about storage optimization, you think about uh, the protection aspects of it, let the application derive and drive the policies that you need to drive storage with. So rather than having a storage admin do all of that separately, let the app, app admin do as much of that possible so that it's easier for them. So that's what today's state of, state of the art is. Where I think it could go further certainly is where now it is completely hidden from the application that there is in fact a storage layer, right? You essentially are talk, talking the application language and storage just works, basically. So, so Trevor, how does that resonate with you, the, the, the near term piece? where there's, there's some application specificity in long term where storage is invisible. Mm -hmm. and, and what does that mean to you and what does that mean to your organization going forward? Uh, I mean, to me as an infrastructure person, it, it means a lot because um, if we decouple the storage from the application, it allows us to be more agile, allows us to make quicker business decisions. And for us, especially with the way that the, the industry is moving, it's moving very quickly, so we need that agility. Do you have to reorganize your skill sets or is it more, just allowing people who used to provision LUNs to go off and do other things. Can you talk about that a little bit? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, we're, we're heavily project-based internally, but okay. uh, one of the great things about the 3PAR is that it's very easy to manage. So the less time that my team spends managing the product, we can you know, put them towards a project. Uh, projects are going to add value to the business and to the members. So what, is pro what does project-based mean from a storage perspective? I got a project, I need some storage, make it as simple as possible and then get out of my way? Is that? Uh, launching a new, um, like for example, we have what are called tariffs. Uh, a new tariff may come online, like for example, um, satellite radio, just a, as an example, may right. be a new tariff. So getting our storage and our systems ready to handle that new tariff, because sometimes what happens in, within Canada especially, is a uh, tariff will be proposed and it'll sit in courts for a couple of years. But in the meantime, all the information is being collected, right? So we have a backlog and all of a sudden, one day, we may have to distribute all that information, so we get a huge influx of data that we have to process. So from a speed and capacity perspective, this is where Flash comes into what's play your, for us. What's your data protection philosophy or mm -hmm. approach? Um, well, we do online uh, backups. We do disk to disk, and then we synchronize or replicate to a remote site. Yeah. Asynchronously or? Yeah, asynchronously, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, it, and is that changing in any way? Is that working for you? Is it meeting your RPO, RTO? Oh, absolutely, yeah, it is. I mean, um, we're, not, we're not saving lives, but we want to make sure that uh, if we do have a disaster <laughs> that, um, that we're able to bring the business back online quickly. Trevor, sure, I got to ask you as we wrap up here, um, everyone wants to know, I'm sure I do uh, as well, what do you recommend as the best streaming device uh, that artists approve? Oh boy, I shouldn't put myself on that. <laughs> <laughs> streaming device or streaming service? Um, I mean, mobile devices, are, they're great. They're, they're with you everywhere. I pretty much can work off of my mobile device exclusively. So I would say probably any mobile device. And uh, frankly, I'm an, I'm an Android guy, so I'll have to say an Android. <laughs> Pandora, Spotify, no. <laughs> we all we we'll know the there, yeah. <laughs> ask any down the middle. That's what I say. People ask me what, you know, Rep Hawk, I'm a party of business, right down the middle. <laughs> I take no sides. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Whatever supports business is good for me. Well, congratulations. <laughs> and uh, great story, because I think that's exactly some of the things you know, we've been hearing about composability is, give me what I need, get the headroom, mm -hmm and easy to manage. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Thank Thanks you. so much for sharing the insights here on theCUBE. HP Storage, number one, the composability's hot. Products are coming to the market really heavy. Good stuff, and you know, the fruit is coming off the tree big time. Congratulations Thank to you. HP Storage Group, and good to see the software guys uh, coming in into the storage group. Right. <laughs> thanks so much. Sanity. <laughs> you, Raj, thanks so much. Really Thank appreciate you. it. Trevor, so much. This is theCUBE, live here in Las Vegas. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. You're watching theCUBE. We'll be right back. <laughs>